I am so excited, as you can tell, because I'm, I'm losing track of where I'm supposed to be this morning, but just about this journey that we're doing, the journey of stones, um, for me, it's, and I hope for you too, that you take this opportunity to ready ourselves and to prepare ourselves to be exactly what God's creating us to be. Instruments of salvation, beacons of light, uh, tokens of truth to the world so that the world knows that Christ is alive. He is not dead on a cross and buried in a tomb, but he's alive and well and flourishing in each of us. Amen? And that's what the journey of stones for me is about. It's about preparing myself to have all the tools that Christ is about to give us through his life. And last week we talked about, um, we, we visited the, the, old the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments and how, how impatient and how quick the Hebrews were to abandon all the things that God had done them and focus on idols and things in their life um, to replace God. Because they were tangible and physical and touchable and, and embraceable. And, and this journey of stones is asking each of us to, to, to put that aside, learn from that lesson, and prepare to be sold out and committed to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But what does it mean to be sold out? Why do we have to be sold out? When you read the scriptures and you, you listen to Christ's teaching, he doesn't talk about being lukewarm. He talks about the opposite, being on fire and full of all the grace and the love and the beauty that is offered through his blood. Amen? Amen. We can't be lukewarm. Lukewarm is an instrument of the devil, of Satan, of complacency in the dark world. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, it was written, Haven't you read this passage of Scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The journey of stones is about preparing ourselves to receive the marvelous thing that is our resurrected King, Jesus Christ. Our first video takes us to that point in which we're going to embrace the vision of the journey, exactly where God is leading it. So are you ready, guys? Shake me. That's what was happening when I couldn't figure out why we weren't having any sound. But it was almost, it was good to have it quiet. It was good for us to have to read it and understand it. Um, was the volume just down? Okay. I thought on all my... All right, great. So we're good. Because 
That's what was... That's how, that's how Satan works. We brought his name up, so he's not here going, he's going to mess with us this morning. <laughs> he really is. He, do, he doesn't want us... To, he, he wants to disrupt the message that is coming that awakens our soul. He, he doesn't want us to take a journey of stones and be committed to Christ because we're dangerous when we're Christ-like. We're dangerous when we're nothing but love and mercy and grace and compassion focused on serving a risen king. He has nothing he can do to us when we are enthralled and totally committed to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He's got to turn his, his crosshairs on somebody else. And that's when we stand up and we're ready to help those he's picking on. Those he's targeting. Those he's trying to tear down. In 1 Peter, our sermon scripture this morning, it's found in the second, second chapter in verse, verse 1. It's written, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Be like newborn babies craving pure spiritual milk so that, so that by so that by that milk you will grow up into your salvation now that you have tested, tasted what the Lord is, and it is good. Pure spiritual milk is exactly what? It's, it's church. It's being immersed in God's word, immersed in worship, and we're immersed in everything that keeps us closer to God and doesn't allow us to be separate from God. Crave it, want it, be immersed in it so that the full armor of God is ours. Amen? If, if we start going on a diet from Jesus, what happens? We lose our focus. It becomes dark and we become lost in the world around us. But, but, but don't do that. It's, as it says, it says, rid yourselves of all, not some, all. That's, that's the difference between totally committed to Jesus Christ and just, hey, I'm a Christian. If I'm sold out and I'm a follower for Jesus Christ, I'm ridding myself. My entire life journey is to be so different from the world, they cannot find fault in who I am. They're going to try. They're going to throw rocks and arrows. I hope you brought your rock this morning. They're going to bring those things um, up into the world and try to sell us out because we're too nice. We're too good. We're too loving and too caring. But Jesus it continued in 1 Peter with verse 4. So as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also are living stones. You are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For the scriptures say, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. You are God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives amongst the pagans that though they accuse you of wrongdoing, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of his return. Now when you read that scripture, it's talking about a transformation, isn't it? It's talking about a change in not only us, but the world around us. And it's talking, it, it's, it's easy to take that scripture and go the we's and the days. The we parts are Jesus is the living stone, amen? 
chosen by God. He is marvelous and beautiful and wonderful. And if you subscribe to that truth, then we as Christ's followers are also living stones transformed into his image. We as Christ's followers are a spiritual house and holy priesthood. Someone that the world can come to to find rest and mercy and truth. We are Christ's followers are never to be put to shame. We as believers are aware of the precious power of Jesus Christ. We as believers are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. We as believers are God's special possession. This is scripture I'm reading. I'm not making this up. This is exactly what God's telling us to be like as we journey to the cross and accept his son Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Look at the things, the blessings, and the benefits that God is stacking up in our favor if we become sold out followers for Christ. Amen? We as believers are the people of God. We as believers are recipients of God's mercy. So what's the decision here? Why is it so hard for us to stay near the cross? Why is it so hard for us to say, I'm sold out for Jesus and the world around me is not going to take me down? Because Satan's in this world. Evil's in this world. And there are a lot of people who haven't chosen, including ourselves, the truth that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and the only way to receive salvation and eternal life with Jesus Christ. We still wrestle with that, don't we? We still wrestle with the, the, the concept that this could, can all this really be that true? When we were looking at the we's and they's, they, those who have rejected Jesus, stumble and fall over the truth. Those who have rejected and do not believe in Jesus fear the truth in the light. Those who have rejected Jesus as their Lord and Savior have not received God's mercy. We have pieces and wonderful moments of when God blesses us and strengthens us and we, we're, we're content. We're content with one sunny day of 69 degrees. When we can have a lifetime, in my mind it would be low humidity, 74, a gentle breeze. Because I'm always hot. We can have all that if we truly embrace what God is calling us to be as sold out, committed disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen? Jenny and I, um, Friday, went to see the movie Risen. Uh, it's just out. Friday was the release date. Very, very entertaining and thought-provoking. Scripturally, couldn't find any fault with it. Now, it stretches your imagination, but it's, it's substantiated in Scripture when, when it said Christ appeared to many. And, and the many that this film focuses on is the Roman centurion, not, you know, he's even higher than the centurion, of, of Pilate, who was there and saw Christ hanging on the cross and told the guard, there's no need to break his legs. He's dead. He stood face to face with our dead Jesus. And then something wonderful happens. The tomb is empty. The body is gone. And Caesar, or not Caesar, but Pilate and the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees are are dying to find an, uh, an excuse for this because we can't allow the people to believe that he is risen. And the journey is about finding the body. 
continuing the lie that the disciples stole it. And it's really, really good. So um, we're going to take the youth group here in March to go see it. And if anybody wants to go along uh, and be chaperones, I invite you because it was really an entertaining story. But it was also, it made you think and digest our whole story of resurrection. And that's what I'm asking us. Today, in our journey of faith, in our Lenten walk of stones, are we ready to say that we are Christ followers? Are we ready to say that there is no doubt in my mind and that with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my strength, I'm here to follow Jesus? Are we ready to say I'm going to recognize the crap that Satan puts in my life to keep, me, to keep my eyes from being focused on the cross? I, I wish it was easy. I wish it was like flipping the switch, but it's not. It's a daily grind. It's a daily commitment. It's a daily immersion of prayer and scripture and fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. If we don't, then we're lukewarm. We're, we're playing church. We're just being comfortable Christians. But I cannot, anywhere I look, find Anywhere in scripture where it says comfortable Christianity is exactly why Christ went to the cross. It is not. It's the exact opposite reason that Christ died. The ones who were comfortable in their faith put him here. The ones who were being challenged by not being committed to God and following God and stopped worrying about the things in their life, the idols and the money and the wealth and the position and the power and their status, put Christ Jesus here because he challenged their faith. He challenged their foundation. He challenged their theology of what it meant to be a Christian. And in this Lenten season, in this journey of faith, we, I, my goal is to challenge you too. To say, man, darn it, there's still stuff. There's still stones, there's still, look, look at it, rocks. There's still boulders in my life that are markers of sin that I haven't given to Jesus yet. And the whole journey to the cross is about bringing these things. Mine should be this big. It should be a boulder. And bringing it here and allowing Christ to take my sin. Our journey of faith, our journey of salvation, of craving the pure spiritual milk is so we can develop and change the world. God never called us to be comfortable. He called us to be world changers, to bring those in darkness, those who are still tripping and stumbling over Jesus, the truth in Jesus Christ, to be the ones who can pick them up and show them the way, the truth, and the life. So, my friends, I urge you to abstain from sinful desires waged against the war of your waged against you in war against your soul. Live a life so pure and so wonderful that those accuse you of wrongdoing can only see the good deeds you're doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Live a shaped and transformed life. The journey to the cross is about putting Satan in his place. Naming him and setting him behind below and underneath the truth that is Jesus Christ. The invitation to the cross this morning is about saying, He's mine. He owns me. And I am His. And I want to talk to you about this video because it's easy to get caught up and what's happening in 10 minutes when we leave this place, when we go back into the world. This video is strong. 
The title of it is Well, you'll figure it out. But I, I want you to understand this video you have to watch in its entirety. And young folks, I'm playing this video so that everyone in this room can be exactly what God's created us to be so that you can thrive in this world.
That's hard to watch. But that's the choice we need to make. When we choose Jesus, when we choose to be committed followers, not only can we make Him flee, but we are given the gift to bring others to that freedom. In this journey of Lent, in this journey of stones, we need to come this morning bringing the things, the ties, the, the strings, and the snares of Satan and lay them right here before the cross and claim before God and everybody that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Put Him away. Bury Him. He knows His fate. But ours is in our choosing. Ours is in our heart, in our mind, in our soul. The choice is ours. Who will we choose? As for me and my house, we will choose the Lord. Amen. As we sing our closing hymn today, it'll be on the screen. And I want to offer you uh, that opportunity as we're singing. Are you washed in the blood? To bring your stone and lay it before the cross and place Jesus first, foremost, and forever in your heart. We're going to put the song next, guys. Father God, 
We have come into your cross. We have come into your house to embrace the blood, the beautiful blood that in each of our hearts makes us white as snow. Lord Jesus, we choose you. Give us the strength and the courage to face this world unafraid. Flee from us, Satan. For we are children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.